another video. This time we're going to talk about probably the most popular death metal band, Cannibal Corpse. And they're very well known as far as in the death metal scene. They're still not mainstream, but they are well known. But at one time, I can remember when I first discovered this band, they did not get the respect they get now. They were getting horrible reviews for their first two records for sure. I can remember numerous zines telling them, saying how using this stupid term called cheesy. That's what they called them, cheesy. And they got horrible reviews in Metal Maniacs and a bunch of other magazines I read at the time, which I thought was garbage because I really loved the band. And I thought they were great. But uh, how I first discovered them back then, as you know, no internet. You look at the, either a magazine or go to the store. And I remember going to a store in the mall. This was actually, again, when I was 16 or 15 years old or something, before I knew about independent record stores. But I go to the malls and the store, the record stores, and there was one called Traps, which I've mentioned before in another, another video. And there is where I discovered Eaten Back to Life, the first album. I saw it. Honestly, the artwork on there, I thought it was kind of uh, juvenile. I, 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 at this point, I was just getting into death metal, transitioning over from hardcore and punk and thrash metal to heavier death metal. And I just, I hadn't heard the band. I just saw the cover and I assumed it was some crappy ass horror rock and roll band. I didn't think it was death metal. For whatever reason, I didn't. So I didn't get it. And then uh, a week later, this other person I knew in the neighborhood who was nuts. This guy used to fight with his parents and beat them with belts. Anyway, that, that's, I'll, get it. I'll tell you more about this guy in another video, he's crazy. But he did, he bought the Cannibal Corpse tape and brought it over and I listened to it and uh, said, wow, this is pretty good. It, and honestly, at that time, no other band sounded like that. Eating Back to Life was very, had a very feral, raw, aggressive approach to it. Very aggressive and, and again, no death metal band sounded like that back then. They had, definitely had their own sound. So I was uh, definitely caught on that night. So I had to go get it myself. And then after that, shortly, Butcher at Birth came out. I went and bought that. And then I thought that one, one was even better. The Chris Barnes vocals went from a uh, mid-tone raspy to a much deeper growl. And I liked it. I thought Butcher at Birth was one of the fucking best records ever released. And uh, I still have the uh, two cassettes here that I had gotten back then. And definitely, Eating Back to Life's artwork was gory, but seemed kind of cartoonish. But Butcher at Birth, that was the real shit right there. That uh, definitely was a good, good, uh, good artwork to get my attention. And the, uh, the first time I saw Cannibal Corpse in concert, uh, it was in, uh, I think it was 92. It, they were still on the tail end of uh, touring for Butchered at Birth. And uh, it was a great show. It, it was called the Complete Control Tour. They were playing with Obituary, Beloved Creation, and, and uh, Agnostic Front. To this day, one of the best shows I've ever seen. Stage dives, huge pit. Malevolent Creation opened, they had a huge pit. Obituary closed, they had a huge pit. There was a brutal pit to every band. I did like 40 stage dives. A friend of mine counted it. It was a crazy show. And then after that, Tomb of the Mutilated was, well actually before Tomb of the Mutilated was, was, was released, I actually had gotten, I, I think I had gotten this Hammer Smash Face EP first. I think, I can't remember. But uh, this came out. This was on 7-inch, uh, and they had a, a special 12-inch uh, maxi EP, which I wish I would have bought that, had different artwork, but uh, this still it was a very cool EP. Title track, Hammer Smash Face, and then the uh, Possessed and Black Sabbath covers, which were fantastic. And yeah, and then around that time when uh, Two of the Mutilated did come out, wherever the hell it's at, the uh, original, with the uh, original logo, this came out in... Uh, they finally, the band finally started getting good reviews. And then two of the Mutilated came out and I went on tour and see this is the shirt from the tour, from the show. I bought it there. Great show. I, I think they were playing with Epidemic. And normally I'm not really into, uh, I don't, normally I don't care anything about the autographs or anything, but I went to the merch table to buy the shirt. Chris Barnes was there, a little midget standing there. And, uh, 
there was a flyer there for epidemic so i said hey sign this i don't know got his autograph i still have it i don't really care nothing about it but it was uh a piece of history, I guess, if you will. But uh, Two of the Mutilated came out, Hammer Smash Face EP was out, and suddenly they started getting acclaim. All the magazines gave them great reviews, everything was looking good. Now they're writing more technical songs, so they got their just due, and they were kind of etching their way up to the level of becoming a more popular band. And then, after that, Two of the Mutilated had already been out, but then they popped up on Ace Ventura Pet Detective movie, everybody knows that. That's funny, that's how a lot of people now around that time discovered Camel Corpse on that movie, which was great for the band. They uh, were on there and I, I just thought it was so bizarre the band was on a, a mainstream movie. But after that, their popularity, ex popularity exploded and I saw them again, I think twice on the Tomb of Mutilated tour. I think I've seen, during the Chris Barnes era, I've, I think I've seen them five times. I, 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 my mind, I, I tend to forget from back then, but yeah, probably about four or five times. And uh, after two mutilated, then the uh, bleeding came out. I have the tape, unfortunately, I have it. Yeah, right here, the bleeding. And it's interesting, when this came out, I had purchased it, then I was leaving to get on a flight to go to California, I believe it was, and as I was taking off on the flight, I had my cassette Walkman, and I listened to this, and I, I could not believe how good this was. I mean, it, all the albums at this point were good, but this one just had some really good songwriting, some really catchy hooks. I, I mean, you know the popular songs off this album, but it just really caught my attention, and Chris Barnes' vocals actually sounded especially good, too. He was working on lows and highs, and they sounded very good. And just the way it started off with uh, Staring Through the Eyes of the Dead was such of a great intro song to lead into the album. And I know a lot of people like to emulate it, say it's their best album, but for me, I actually like The Bleeding better than Two. Just a little bit. Two of the Mutilated is a great album, but I, I, the Bleeding is pretty good. Uh, it's such a good album. Then after that, everybody knows that Chris Barnes left the band or got kicked out, whatever. I guess he was a... Uh, they didn't get along, whatever the case is. And then uh, they brought in George Fisher, Corpse Grinder. And at the time, I, I was already listening to Monstrosity, who he was a singer for. I had the 7-inch uh, they came out with and then the uh, full-length. And I liked it, but then I found out he was taking over his vocals, which is strange, taking over vocals on Cannibal Corpse. I was kind of pissed off about it, which makes no sense, because I thought he was a good singer back then, but I just wanted, I was so accustomed to Chris Barnes' vocals. And they came out with uh, Vile, and uh, it, it didn't really do anything for me. I listened to it now, I was like, wow, it's a great album, but at the time, and I think it was just because I was uh, wanting to hear Chris Barnes on that. And the... Uh, they continue releasing things. There was a there was a ton of other albums during the George Fisher era, which still continues to this day. All of them are solid. I mean, the Wretched Spawn, Gore Obsessed, Gallery of Suicide is I like it, but it's not my favorite one. Kill is very good. Bloodthirst, and even some of the more recent ones. And it's got to be where they release so much stuff that. Uh, I kind of get lost in it, but these first, I don't even know how many full links they have now, but first 12 to 15 albums I have, and they are very good, and over the years, they, when they release stuff, they do a really good job. They even released this uh, VHS Monolith of, Monolith of Death Tour, 97, 96, 97, pretty good. Um, one of the great things they released was this... Uh, 15 year killing spree box set this is an excellent excellent item if you don't have this it's highly recommended i mean they have two cds the best of which is all the junk you already have but what's interest really great they have their original demo which is good very raw excellent and a pure diamond on this uh, release is the created to kill sessions which basically is when they first started recording vile and chris barnes recorded the vocals on some of those songs the tracks are on here and they sound pretty good do i like it better than george fisher i like them both 
they're both good. Uh, they have some of their cover songs, creator cover song, and some other stuff possessed. The DVD, some interesting things on here, a lot of uh, great stuff to live at Moscow. Live footage, but yeah, great uh, box set. And then uh, also they released the Centuries of Torment DVD, the first 20 years. This is excellent. This is how a band DVD is supposed to be. It's full of live footage, all their music videos to that point, a, a lengthy documentary. If you have not seen at least the documentary, I know it's on YouTube. Um, I think uh, Metal Blade on their channel has it on there. If you have not seen it, it is great. It definitely takes you into the uh, feeling, it makes you feel like it takes you back in time to when the band first started to where they came now. Lots of uh, extra items on here as well. Highly recommended. They also came out with a book too, um, Bible of Butchery or something like that. The book is okay. Is, is it mandatory? No. Honestly, the documentary on the Centuries of Torment DVD is, gives you much more background about the band, but the book is still pretty interesting. There's some brief history and some stories on the road and whatnot. But there's also a good section of it with lyrics, which I thought was a complete waste. I could look at the lyrics of the albums. I, I didn't want, I didn't buy that to have, have a song book. But if you're a completist, it's still worth having. It's a pretty good, uh, pretty good book. But overall, um, Candle Corpse has had a very solid uh, discography, and it's one of the bands I've probably seen the most, with them along with Napalm Death. I've seen those two bands so many times, but they have stand the test of time, and even their newer stuff, it's still good. And last year, right now this is 2020, 2022, last year in 2021, I saw them at Psycho Fest in uh, Las Vegas, and they played the pool area, and it was excellent. It's like they picked a specific, they picked all their slower grinding songs for that set, it was just, heavy and slow and it was a big huge uh, circle pit in the uh, water great 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 stuff but uh i'll leave you on that and check out the other videos i try to do one a new one every week i'm gonna try we'll see